Hello guys, this is the Donut Deflector, and welcome to the first video after the uh, whole wipe of my videos now. There are no other videos on this channel as of now. I took them all down, they're all unlisted, so a fresh start here. And with the fresh start comes with me hopping to a different distro. I used to use Ubuntu with the i3 window manager. But now I have moved on to Manjaro, and I'm using the KDE desktop, or Plasma desktop. I'll refer to it as KDE, though. Welcome to what it looks like here. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be a first impressions of sorts for Manjaro and KDE as I made the switch. Stay tuned for a long-term review of Manjaro later. So, firstly... Installing was very easy. All I had to do was boot off the live CD and select Start Non-Free Drivers. And it started up right in the KDE desktop. Here's a note though. I first installed Manjaro with XFCE. That was a good experience. However, I wanted to try KDE. I did install the desktop environment and tried it out. After a while, and by a while, I mean a few hours. I just decided to do a fresh reinstall of Manjaro to get rid of the bloat. I didn't want to do the hard work. And so here's KDE. I also have i3 window manager working. I can select that from the login menu. But uh, I really like KDE. I think I might, I might use it over i3. Manjaro automatically installed my uh, graphics drivers, the non-free ones because I did I did tell it to boot off of proprietary drivers so automatically did that I could not do that in Ubuntu I had to actually add a PPA and then go to the GTK software thing and then install it from there but hey Manjaro did it right away that was good plus another thing I liked about Manjaro is that it's rolling release. I used Ubuntu latest edition, so that would have been Ubuntu 15.10, and there it has more up-to-date software than the LTS, but you're going to have to upgrade every six months. I didn't feel like dealing with that, so I went with Manjaro, which is rolling release. I was not going to go with Arch Linux, primarily because of two reasons. It takes um, more commitment to install, which uh, I don't want to take the time commitment for that. I will install Arch eventually though, um, that's going to be on my list of projects. That and it also held back the packages. So the software is more up to date than Ubuntu 15.10, but less up to date than Arch is. So you get packages that are fairly new, but not going to break on you as often as Arch. Hopefully that's the case, because holding back the packages actually does something, and it's not just delaying. The only quirk I had with, with Manjaro was with the printer. When you add a printer, you're, you don't log in as the user account. You log in as root. I would have logged in on on Ubuntu, I logged in as user account, but I did a quick Google search. I used DuckDuckGo actually, and um, that remedied the situation quickly. I learned that you had to use root for that, and it was quick. So, on to, I guess, um, anything else I like here. Pac-Man is really nice. It's pretty quick and easy too, and you can even choose which source to install some pieces of software from. For i3, it has a few optional packages that you can install, like i3 lock and i3 status, and you can choose that, or you can just choose to go with the base package and have nothing else, which is a nice touch, um, brings a little something there. Now on with my experience with KDE. I am not a big user of KDE. I This is my uh, first experience with KDE, actually, so I have had no experience with KDE. I've used... Tons of other desktops other than KDE. I've used GNOME, I've used XFCE, LXDE, Unity, Mate, Cinnamon, 
I've used uh, pretty much all the main desktop environments and um, tiling window managers I've only gone with i3 and openbox well openbox is just a windows manager and uh, so I've got KDE and it's really nice the only problem is the uh, kind of slow animations but you can fix that easily with whatever you got uh, I like that Manjaro did come with a good set of uh, themes here. I personally like uh, Breeze Dark. Maya is not too bad. I like Maya. But um, Breeze Dark is just my thing. And uh, I would. Uh, Maya, just for the splash screen theme, I really like it. It just looks awesome. So that's what I use for there, but everything else is is breeze dark and uh, I don't like the <laughs> I don't like the breeze icon theme Maya's uh, I, I like it better cuz it it, uh, it reminds me of super flat remix and uh, it uses the green elements here it just looks looks nicer I just I like it more oh, I gotta hover over these icons it's a shame that it doesn't come with an OBS theme. I mean, uh, for the icon. It does come... F I, I switched to the Maya theme, so it hasn't switched back to Breeze. But uh, it, it's nice. Definitely nice. It comes with a pretty good set of defaults. And uh, I've only used the defaults to set up how the system... The system, how I like it. Haven't installed any other icon themes or KDE or GTK themes. Uh, I like the animations that comes with KDE. Like these, this swiping animation is... I like that. That's pretty cool. And, uh, the, uh... Wobbly. It, uh, I like how when you grab it, 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 it becomes transparent here. That's, that's a nice touch. I like the desktop effects. But, uh... By far, my favorite part of KDE, though, is is just one effect, okay? Wobbly windows. I mean, just look at that. That's, that's the most useless effect ever. It probably looks like crap to a lot of people, but I, it's awesome. And when you, when you let go, it kind of like wiggles to a stomp. It's, it's just awesome. It just looks cool. It's very useless, though. I don't... <laughs> I like it, but I don't like it enough to actually use it. Because it, I, it's kind of useless, and uh, I'm not one for effects. I like to keep it plain and simple. That's why I run XFCE with no animations. I know, there's recordception right here. Other than that, um, I guess there's good default wallpapers. <laughs> Uh, Plasma comes with a lot of good default wallpapers. I like them, but my favorite's here. Just the emerald color looks nice. Uh, going on to widgets, I love widgets. They uh, bring me back to the time when I used to use the uh, the gadgets from from uh, Windows Vista when I was younger. I would I had the CPU and memory one up here with the clock and. I just loved it, and that brings back those memories of me using them. But this time, these things are actually useful. Heck, it even comes with a comic one by default. That's that's pretty that's pretty cool. Like I can read my my Dilbert and my XK XKCD network monitor, the uh, memory and CPU. Those widgets were all and and the uh, notepad. Here. Those widgets were all in in. Uh, Windows Vista, but it, it it they've come back revived and actually not useless. And I like it, and they look elegant and nice too. I don't know. Other than that, I like the uh, the Arch User Repository. The AUR is you can get everything off of there, and uh, if it wasn't in the Manjaro repositories, then you can just get it from the AUR, and that's that's just awesome. Like, uh, I got Redshift and uh, OBS from there. It gives you a whole list of anything that has to do with that when you say your Redshift. 
and you can look at the s small descriptions of each one and look through them. That's a nice touch. And uh, so, of course, these these packages aren't as going to be as stable as their Manjaro official ones, but there isn't a Manjaro official one for OPS. But I'm fine with it because it's 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 fine. I'm fine with the bleeding bleeding edge here. Uh, I'm fine with having some of my software be on the arch side of bleeding edge and still instead of having the Manjaro uh, packages held back. The Manjaro stability, I guess you could say. But anyways, that's it for my quick little thing here of me and my experience with Manjaro thus far. Stay tuned for the full reveal of Manjaro with KDE, of course. And I'll see you guys next time.